Hello, how are you? My name is Victor Lopez, and this is Direct Democrats. My website is directdemocrats.com. What motivates me now is direct democracy. I believe direct democracy is the best system we can have. Specifically, I refer to Swiss-style direct democracy. My videos are essentially dedicated to direct democracy. But regularly, I come across issues where direct democracy will be the solution to the problem. And in fact, most of my videos deal with the specific situations where direct democracy, Swiss style, and I insist Swiss style, will produce much better outcomes. If you have watched some of my other videos, you see I am very concerned about what's going on in the Ukraine. At first, several months ago, last year, when the war started, I supported the Ukraine completely. And I still support that the Russians should leave the Ukraine. I also think the Ukraine should take steps to create security and satisfaction in the Russian-speaking minority, which, which represent about 30% of the Ukrainians. I think their language should be official language of the Ukraine, along with the Ukrainian. They should have autonomy, they should have recognition, and they shouldn't feel that they need Russia to protect them. To do this, the Ukraine should also follow the organization of Switzerland and, of course, direct democracy. But today, my video is about the way the war is going. Yesterday, in my video, I spoke about how concerned I am that some American generals and the policy of the Ukrainian government is not just to expel the Russians from the Ukraine from the eastern provinces, which I think most people agree that Russia had no business there, and I don't think Russia should have invaded the Ukraine. Because even if the Russian-speaking Ukrainians were not well treated, certainly they were not as badly treated as the Uyghurs are treated by the Chinese government. I'm sure there was not adequate recognition. There's probably resentment against them. But even with that, Russia is not justified to invade. And even if the Ukraine wanted to join NATO, Russia is not justified. Because in fact, if the Ukraine wants to join NATO, it's for the same reason that now Finland and Sweden want to join NATO. And many countries around Russia want to join NATO because they are scared of Russia. They are scared of Mr. Putin's actions. That is the main reason why the Ukraine does not want to be in the Russian orbit. Mr. Putin has got it backwards. The Ukrainian people do not want to leave the orbit of influence of Russia because of NATO, because the Americans push them that way. The Ukrainian people want to do that because they are scared of Russia. Like I say, at the beginning, I was fully supportive, and I think Russia should get a bloody nose, which I think they are getting. But it is scaring the hell out of me to see that the Ukrainian policy now is to recover Crimea, and that American generals and NATO generals and I don't know if politicians, they support that the Ukraine recover Crimea. Like I said yesterday, Crimea belongs to Russia because Crimea was turned over to the Ukraine when both the Ukraine and Russia were under the umbrella of the Soviet Union. That is, there was the Russian, the Soviet Federation was one huge country. But once that system, that dictatorship, that awful system collapsed, rightly so, and Ukraine became independent, then Crimea should revert to Russia. Because practically for all its history, the Crimea Peninsula was Russian. And it's a strategic point for Russia. Perhaps that's why it was Russian for so long. The Ukraine didn't even exist as a nation, and Crimea was already Russian. It only makes sense that if the Ukraine becomes independent, because a completely separate state, that that land of Crimea, which was given to the Ukraine because it was, in quotation marks, a sister republic of Russia and the USSR, that republic should go back to Russia. And I'm quite sure 
that the Russians will not tolerate losing Crimea. I'm quite sure they will even be prepared to use a nuclear weapon. And remember, the Americans use a nuclear weapon in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the reason was to shorten the war. The reason was to prevail quickly over the Japanese. The Americans were already in the process of winning the war. The argument was, if the war is shortened because of the nuclear bomb, then the 100,000 or 200,000 civilians killed by the bombs will save many more lives. I personally think the Americans should apologize to the Japanese. They should explain, well, it was a wrong decision. We really had to win the war. But yes, in retrospect, it was a cruel decision. We shouldn't have killed 200,000 women and children and civilians which, who didn't have much to do with the war. But that's a different issue. And overall, I support the Americans. I think America is a great country in spite of all the troubles. And I think America right now is the warrantor of freedom in the world especially in the face of China, and at least until the Chinese dictatorship does not evolve into a democracy or until India is not strong enough to really provide a proper backup or even be the leading country for all democracies. Now we have another incident with a drone that scares me even more because we have a drone near Russia that was down by some Russian jets. I don't know which way they did it. I don't know if they were reckless. Maybe they were. I know the drone was probably in international waters. I do not question that. But I don't think a U.S. military drone has any business flying near Russia at the time of war. It has no business being there. I mean, Russia is not trying to take over the Black Sea like China is trying to take over the South China Sea. Russia is not talking about the South Russian Sea. Russia is happy with the Black Sea as it is. They want Crimea because they want a, a sortie, they want a harbor in the Black Sea for their fleet. And if they don't have Crimea, they, it's very difficult for them to have it. We have this drone, which is now, this is a direct connection, a direct encounter between American military and Russian military. The Americans have to be very careful because if we are not careful, we could get sucked into a war. And I'm not American. I live in Canada. But if the United States gets sucked into a war with Russia because of NATO, we will all be sucked in. I think it's also a terrible thing for America to get as involved as they are because the involvement seems to be growing by the day. That is, that is, in my opinion, a huge mistake. Furthermore, it's not as if the Biden administration or the American politicians have a mandate, have a clear-cut mandate of, say, 60, 70, 80 percent of the Americans strongly supporting the current involvement of the Americans in the Ukraine. It's not so. The country is split. 43%, 43% support of the involvement. They do not say they support the involvement if that includes putting drones flying around Russia or also giving them as much equipment as we're giving them now, as the Americans are giving them now. 43% of Americans approve of the support that the Biden administration is giving to Ukraine. Or better... It was with, given the Ukraine last year. As things are becoming more tense, we also see the support is dropping. It's obviously dropping because I think the Americans are getting scared and they're also having more doubts about how much money are they prepared to give the Ukraine. The majority of Americans do not consider the Russian invasion of the Ukraine as an immediate threat to the United States. 65% consider it a minor threat. Only 18% of Americans strongly approve of the American involvement. And remember, keep in mind, this is before the talk about giving the Ukrainians jets, and this is before the incident with the, with the drone, and also without people knowing 
that American generals and NATO generals and the Ukrainian policy is to recover Crimea, which, like I say, Crimea historically was Russian. And that really risks nuclear war. Now, if you're an American, I think you should demand a referendum. You should demand a referendum to give the American government a clear-cut authorization to get more involved or to maintain the current level of involvement. I don't think the American administration has the right to send you to die, to risk the welfare of your citizens, to even risk a nuclear war. I don't think the government does not have that right and shouldn't have it. And remember, because you do not have direct democracy, formally, you cannot do anything. Your only recourse is to protest and protest and protest, like you, like many Americans did to stop the war in Vietnam. You, you probably remember the burning of the flags, the coffins with thousands of Americans coming back to the U.S. for a proper burial. Yes, American heroes, but dead. And this was a war also that was not an immediate threat to the Americans. It was not an immediate threat to the United States or even to any of its allies in the area. Not to Japan, not to Australia, not to New Zealand. Vietnam was in a civil war and the communists were winning. Fortunately, the communists have ditched the economic part of communists already in Vietnam, like they did in China, and I'm sure with time they will also ditch the communist politics because they are not leading them anywhere and they oppress the people. But what I want to say is the American government also has a history of getting involved, let's say honestly, and because they want to protect freedom, but the fact is that in the Gulf of Tonkin in Vietnam, they lied. The American government lied to the American people, and as a result, thousands and thousands of Americans were sent to their deaths on the pretext that the Vietnamese had attacked an American warship. It turned out to be a lie, and many Americans died there because of that. And then we have Iraq. In Iraq, thousands of Americans also died because if not a lie, at least let's call it misinformation, which is such a popular word today. And the misinformation was that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction in his arsenal and that that posed a great threat to his neighbors, especially Israel, which has a strong support group in the United States. Well, it turned out it was not true. But because of that, because of that, because of that not truth, thousands of Americans and thousands of Iraqis died. I agree, Saddam Hussein was a bad actor. He should have been removed. But I think the Americans should, have gone, should not have gone in the war in Vietnam, the war in Iraq, without a clear mandate by referendum that the American people do support such actions. I don't think you want to wait until Americans start dying, either because the conventional war in the, Uk in the Ukraine increases or because we're getting into a nuclear exchange. I don't think you want to do that. I think you have to do what you did for Vietnam. You have to start to protest, to demonstrate, demanding a referendum. I know. The American Constitution at the federal level has no provisions for a referendum. But the Constitution can be changed. There is a procedure and can be changed fairly quickly. And while the referendum does not take place, the American government should commit themselves not to increase the aid to the Ukraine. To give the Russians a bloody nose is enough. To force the Russians to fight is enough. And also I'm getting a little bit concerned about this guy Zelensky. I strongly supported him at the beginning, but now he's starting to look to me as a bit as a hothead. I don't know if he has delusions of grandeur, and even if he dies, he wants to pass into history as the great hero of the Ukraine. 
I admire the guy in many ways, but I think he's getting too belligerent. And this business of making a specific policy of the Ukraine, the recovering of Crimea, I think absolutely crazy. I think it's time to put the brakes to the American politicians and also the American politicians should put the, should put the brakes on Zelensky because this is getting out of control. And I insist, I think if the Russians start to feel under threat, they will unite behind Putin and they will not hesitate to use a tactical nuclear weapon on the Ukraine to end the war quickly, just like the Americans did in Japan. And unless we want to go to the next step, and I don't think we want to go into a nuclear war with Russia, even if Russia drops a nuclear bomb in the Ukraine, a tactical nuclear bomb, then I think we have to dial down what's going on in the Ukraine. Also, just in case the Biden administration, like the Trump administration, didn't notice, 78% of Americans are not satisfied with the way the country is run. 78% the latest figure, but the figures are always very high, and it doesn't matter who is in power. It doesn't matter who controls Congress or the presidency. It doesn't matter if he's Republican or Democrat. The dissatisfaction with the American leadership is great. And this is my point now. You should insist of having direct democracy, Swiss style, at the federal level in the United States. The people in the United States, you, you do not have power. You only have the power to elect. You do not have any power to decide. Of course, in Canada, we are not any better. We are just like you. But I think it's time that in America, in Canada, in France, in Britain, everywhere, in all democracies, Japan, India, etc., we demand direct democracy. We demand to be the last authority. Because democracy means government by the people. And to be government by the people, we need direct authority to use it whenever we want, to stop the politicians, to change laws, to change policies, to change the constitution on our own, on your own, and with our decision be binding that nobody could overturn. The U.S. Supreme Court would not overturn it. Any other court or the politicians. The results of a referendum are binding. And the referendum is initiated by the people, not by the politicians. Not like the Brexit referendum, which was done because Mr. Cameron wanted it done. I do not enter into the concept if Brexit was good or bad. But I think the British people had the right to decide. Of course, in time, they should have the right to decide to come back into the European Union again, if so, decide. That power should not be in the hands of the British Parliament. No, the Parliament should not be sovereign. I don't care how many centuries. I know the British system is great. It's one of the best political systems the world ever produced, but is showing its age and in its renewal. And to renew that system, which in a way is the root of the American system too, to, to renew that system, to reinvigorate these democracies, we need Suez-style direct democracy. I am happy to speak about direct democracy anywhere, anytime, in English or Spanish. Bringing direct democracy, bringing awareness of direct democracies to as many people as I can is my mission now in life because I have not the slightest doubt that when you, when you become familiar with direct democracy, besides a few empty, false cliches about direct democracy, I'm sure you will support direct democracy. The politicians will not like it because they lose some power, but we're not going to throw them into the river. We'll keep the elected politicians. We still need them to do most of the work in laws and policies. But the people should have the right, you, the American people, the Canadian people, everybody should have the right to be the last authority and to apply the break to the politicians or the accelerator to the, to the politicians when the people so decide that they want to do. 
Thank you very much.